It's recording. Hi to everybody that's joining. Get to see some names popping up here. Um, we will be getting started with our webinar in about five minutes. So for everybody that's already here attending, if you want to, um, over in the chat, if you want to just start typing in um, where you're from, who you're affiliated with, um, the housing authority you're affiliated with, we would love to see it. Miami Dade, PHA. Hi. And uh, it looks like we have quite a few people that have just joined us. We will be getting started here in three or four minutes. Lexington, Kentucky. Hi, Austin. Rochester Housing Authority. Hello, Linda. Okay, we're going to give everyone just a couple more minutes to uh, get into the webinar and then we will go ahead and get started. Okay, it looks like the people joining have slowed down a little bit. So we will go ahead and kick off the webinar if all of the panelists are ready to go. Okay, great. 
Wonderful. Okay. So uh, first of all, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you so much for being here. We're very excited that everyone's here. Uh, my name is Jill Mackinich. I work for Shots Strategy Group. We're an independent contractor that works with HUD to uh, coordinate and plan the logistics of the competition. Before I get started, I have just a few housekeeping tips to cover just so you know how to participate in the webinar. At any time during the webinar, um, you're going to have the opportunity to submit questions. And to do that, you're just going to type your question in at the bottom of the Q&A panel. Um, let's, please, if you have questions, put them in on the Q&A, not the chat, because we'll be monitoring um, that Q&A box. Um, we're going to address as many of your questions as we possibly can during the Q&A session, which is at the end of the webinar. Uh, any um, questions that we don't get to, we are recording them and we will um, follow up and put them on the Q&A section of the competition website within the next week. So you can uh, watch the questions as they're being asked in the Q&A box. And if you see something that you particularly would like to see answered, you can upvote it. And to upvote a question, you just click the thumbs up button in the left hand corner uh, below the question. And my colleague Lauren will be monitoring the questions and the upvotes as they come in. And she is going to um, put them in a queue and the questions with the most upvotes will move to the top. So if you see something you want answered, please upvote it. And uh, we are recording this webinar and we will share a link um, tomorrow. You'll, everyone will get an email, follow-up email with a link uh, to the recorded webinar and we will also be putting that on the competition website. And uh, just one last note, this webinar is specifically for public housing public housing authorities. And while we're happy that everyone's here, we're only going to be answering questions today about uh, or that are specific to PHAs because we do have a limited amount of time. So if you're from a college or university, uh, you can feel free to go ahead and put your question in and we will follow up um, in the Q&A section of the competition website to answer those or you can email us at IAH at hudusergovernor and we will be happy to uh, answer your question, no problem. Um, but today we're only going to be answering questions that are um, specific to the public housing authorities. So uh, we appreciate you understanding. All right, well, that's all of my housekeeping for uh, today. And I'm going to go ahead and jump in so we can get started. Uh, let me introduce uh, my partners from HUD. Uh, first, we have Regina Gray, and she is the Director of the Affordable Housing Research and Technology Division. Um, she, that's with uh, HUD's policy, I'm sorry, Office of Policy Development and Research. She is the Competition Director and has been involved with the competition since its inception eight years ago. We also have Jagruti Reiki. She is a Social Science Analyst um, at the Affordable Housing Research and Technology Division in PDNR at HUD. And she is the competition's assistant director and has been involved with the competition for the past four years. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to turn the virtual mic over to Regina and I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about the competition. Thank you, Jill. Uh, let's see if I need a few minutes and we'll pull up the presentation. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm, I'm sure with the end of the fiscal year, things are crazy, uh, out of control, but uh, you're spending time with us this afternoon to learn more about the competition and how you can partner with us uh, this year, and we are very excited to have you. So thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, before I get started, I'd like to say thank you to Shots uh, Publishing. We are working with them, partnering with them. This is our second uh, competition um, where we have partnered with the organization and they have been outstanding. So thank you, Jill, 
Thank you, Lauren. If Sherry is here, thank you so much, Sherry, for joining us this afternoon and for all your hard work uh, on the competition. I'd also like to thank Jagruti Reiki, who is the um, program assistant director. Uh, Judy has been, uh, Jagruti has been working with me for the last 40 years, I mean 40 years, wow, four years, <laughs> four years on this competition. Not 40, four years. Uh, and she has been absolutely wonderful. So thank you, Jagruti. Uh, and we're gonna make this competition even better this year. Uh, so welcome to the 2021 Innovation in Affordable Housing Student Design and Planning competition. I am Regina Gray. I am the director of the competition uh, for this year. And I'd like to get started and talk to you about what this competi uh, competition is uh, and in the hopes that you will be interested in partnering with, with us this year. Uh, and you can just get started with the slides, please. So the Innovation and Affordable Housing Student Design and Planning Competition is designed to address three uh, central goals. Uh, the first is to encourage innovation and new forward-thinking strategies for improving access to affordable housing for low and moderate income families. The second objective is to raise the capacity and learning among the growing number of young professionals who are entering into the housing field. And then the last is to encourage students to work together in a multidisciplinary fashion to address challenges related to affordable housing. So we are now entering into the eighth year of the student competition. And we are very happy to report that we believe that this competition has empowered students uh, from various discipline, uh, from various disciplines to develop innovative solutions to our housing affordability crisis um, that is across the country. Uh, so we think that this competition has done a great deal um, to foster more professionalism amongst the graduate students. Uh, and as they enter into their careers, uh, we have found that one of the benefits of the program is that some students have gotten jobs um, related to the work uh, that they've done uh, on this program. And we also believe that the students benefit with uh, classroom credit. Uh, we encourage colleges and universities to offer semester credit or uh, college credit for this competition. There's a lot of work that's involved. For the partnering PHA, um, we're going to hear a little bit more about uh, the benefits of this program a little later when we hear from Santa Fe Housing, uh, uh, Santa Fe uh, County Housing Authority, who's going to be talking to us about their project from this past year. Uh, but we believe that these innovative solutions that students develop around the program really does assist housing authorities in their projects and the movement with these projects. Uh, but we'll learn a little bit more about that uh, in, in just a few minutes. So for the, for the most recent competition, HUD partnered with Santa Fe County Housing Authority. Uh, and the project was a new mixed income, mixed use development that um, was situated on 6.6 .6 acres of land that was recently purchased by the, by the county. And the, the good thing about the project is that it addresses a lot of the, uh, the needs of the community because it is a, a fast growing community. Uh, so we will hear more about Santa Fe's project in just a few minutes. So how does the competition work? Well, the competition consists of teams of three to five graduate students who will submit initial applications uh, that include a, des a description of a narrative, uh, a design blueprint, and a pro forma uh, where they can develop the financing strategy for the project. We choose five industry professionals to serve as jurors, uh, and these jurors, jurors will select four teams who will then go on to compete in the final competition referred to as phase two. The finalist teams uh, will visit the PHA site 
in early March to further refine their applications and to learn more about the site. And then in April, the teams will uh, travel to HUD along with the jury and a live audience uh, and will present their final proposals and also compete for an award. The winning finalist team receives $20,000. The runner-up team receives $10,000. And then the remaining two finalist teams each receive $5,000. So what are your roles and responsibilities as a partnering PHA? Um, there's a few things that you will have to do as a partner with us for the competition. We ask you to provide names of stakeholders or PHA staff members, community planners or architects, engineers, anyone who's associated with the project or who is familiar with the project to serve as a member of the jury. Uh, and we do this, you know, this is a bit different this year because we, uh, in previous years, we did not have any uh, uh, personnel related to the project involved as a member of the jury. We believe that this year there might be some benefits to having uh, someone serve on the, on the jury that has uh, some familiarity with the project and could lend some advice or tips um, to, the, to the jury about, about it. We also asked uh, the partner to provide any documentation or briefing materials, whether it be a comprehensive plan or a segment of a comprehensive plan or master plan, um, a demographic plan, uh, annual report, or any relevant information that will help us, the students, the juror, understand the project a little bit better. And then the main role for the PHA partner is to host the site visit. And the site visit usually occurs sometime around early to mid-March. Uh, PDNR will cover the travel expenses uh, by two members of each student team. But the PHA is uh, responsible for hosting the site visit. And we'll learn more about that in a few minutes uh, about the specifics. Uh, but that is a, a major responsibility of the PHA. PHA staff are invited to attend the final award ceremony and presentations in April. Uh, I believe PDNR will cover um, two staff members and Jill will correct me if that is incorrect. Uh, but yes, we do welcome PHA staff to attend the award ceremony. So how can you apply? Well, PHA registration will open on Thursday, October 8th at noon Eastern time. Uh, we ask that you please send an email to IAH at HUDUser.gov. That's IAH at HUDUser.gov and respond in your email with the following uh, requests or answers. Uh, the first one, are you planning to address an affordable housing challenge that involves a new or existing project? So the project can be either new construction or an existing project that requires renovation. Is your housing authority accessible to an airport? This is very important because we have students who are traveling. Uh, we will also be traveling. So we do uh, prefer uh, to have you know, uh, easy access to an airport and easy way to travel and, and, and move around. Please provide any preliminary details about the site, whether it's new or existing, the acreage, any information about the plot, or again, anything that you think would, would help the students and the jurors understand what the project is. Provide illustrations of the plot of land for new projects or provide photos of existing, of the existing development that's already sitting on the plot. And then, as I said before, um, an annual report, consolidated plan, or any supporting documentation about the community and surrounding area. Um, that will help un students understand sort of the dynamics of the community and understand sort of what the uh, cultural and social traditions are and all types of different information that would be useful for them. And then finally, we ask you to include a contact, uh, someone who can provide further information if needed, 
So if the contact is not the executive director or the deputy director, um, we would like to have a contact of someone who is familiar with the project who we can contact in case we have additional questions. And as I said, um, to learn more about the student competition, our website is IAH at HUDUser.gov. That's IAH at HUDUser.gov. And now I'm going to turn it over to Joe Montoya and Lee DiPietro, who are joining us from the Santa Fe County Housing Authority. They're going to talk to you about their experience with the competition. Uh, they'll give you some pointers and tips on what to expect uh, and talk a little bit more about their roles and their responsibilities during the competition. And then just talk to you a little bit about the benefits. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, I often talk about the benefits for students, uh, but I would like the PHA to share how this program benefits them. So I'm going to turn it over to Joe and Lee, and thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Can you hear me now? Can you hear us? OK. Yes. Good. So thank you, Jane. Welcome. I sure appreciate it. Um, we I just want to let the folks know out there that we formed a really good relationship with Regina and her staff. And Jill and her staff, they were professionals all the way through the process made things very easy for us. So I would encourage anybody, any of the housing authorities uh, that are considering uh, doing an application to really do it because it's really of great benefit. We'll go into some level of detail in terms of what benefits we saw from the process. But I do wanna just let you know that uh, this has been a very positive experience um, dealing with both HUD and uh, HUD's consultants in terms of this uh, process. Next slide. So um, HUD asked for some specific kind of documentation right off the bat in order to be able to understand whether or not they would like to be able to look at this particular project in this particular areas. Um, the narrative description of the project, it, it, fairly easy to do. It didn't take much to, to do it. We had already bought the land, so it was a very good time for us to be able to get into this project. Uh, simply because we were just starting our uh, pre-development aspects to it and really just starting those kind of necessary things that we need to go to in order to start building vertically. Uh, of course, we had the land survey and the plat already available. Um, we did take information from our ESRI infographics. Um, however, different cities have different systems in place um, in, in order to provide that transport, provide the transportation uh, information. Um, I would encourage folks if there's a city or county consolidated plan within your jurisdiction to be able to try to use that to provide a nice context in terms of the overall systems. Of course, general plans with affordable housing uh, elements to them, I think are also important. Um, annual plans for the PHAs, of course, everybody would have that. And that provides, I think, a kind of uh, necessary framework for the operations of a housing authority and also kind of project systems and how the, this particular project might fit into it. Um, but oftentimes I think, and I could be wrong with this, but I, my impression from HUD is that they're also looking for kind of a larger context issues in terms of how this particular project would sit into not only the systems for the housing authority, but how would it a, a assist in the overall plans for providing affordable housing in the generalized area. And of course, they asked some preliminary information in terms of what uh, financing options are available within your community. Um, New Mexico does not have as many financing options as many uh, other areas, especially some of the areas that I saw had joined up um, for this. Um, however, um, we provided a nice complete list of all the options that we knew that were available. And just to make a point, I think the students, uh, one of the students, uh, uh, projects uh, really came up with a fantastic idea in themselves that we hadn't thought about. So, so that's just one area by which the, the students' newness to a project or newness to development uh, was able to assist us. Lee, did you have anything to add? No, not on that. Um, Lee, I'll tell you what, 
because Lee did all the hard work on this. I'll let her take this option here. <laughs> so I, I was responsible for sort of the pre-planning on the site visit and sort of the strategic things. So just some, some points um, for your radar. So we had to identify a meeting space and an accommodation space and what the timelines were. So we arranged all, all of those pieces. We found a space that wasn't part of the housing authority um, we found accommodations that were close to that space, and then we coordinated um, transportation as well to and from those particular spaces during that period of time. We also coordinated a little bit more informationally from the airport to the hotel, and then um, we actually hosted a, a, an event um, the day before the site visit. So, you know, that's an option for you as well. We actually rented meeting space at the hotel for that so that everyone could kind of do a meet and greet and get to know each other a little bit before we jumped into the site visit the next day. We created a budget, obviously food, beverage, space design, and then signage to get um, to the actual space. We also um, identified who from the county is going to participate in this? We had, um, you know, um, a panel discussion in the morning on the day of the site visit, and we had a Q and A at the end of the day. So we identified government staff, people, and officials. We identified people who could speak to the history and the cultural aspects of the community, as well as affordable housing experts. And we invited the architect who had been uh, selected to do conceptual plans for our particular site. So we designed an agenda working with HUD and it included the evening reception, as I indicated, what the site visit was going to be from the very beginning of the day to the very end. And then, uh, you know, who was gonna sit on panel discussions and what the Q&A looked like. So that was all the pre-site visit, um, you know, just tucking and tying things. It takes a little bit of time, as you know. It was pretty exciting because, as as you may guess from the timelines, um, COVID responses had just started, right? And so we were at, at the very end, not even knowing whether or not we would actually have a physical site visit or not. So there was some some dynamics going. Uh, we were fortunate that we were able to get many um, commissioners uh, in, involved, uh, county commissioners, uh, city council, and and the mayor involved. So you know that sometimes takes work in terms of their scheduling um, for the reception the mayor wasn't able to attend so we were a little disappointed in that but but we had very good cooperation from both the city staff county staff um, city officials and had a broad range of expertise uh, being able to present to the folks in terms of not only the context issues of, of santa fe itself uh, the demographic issues of santa fe itself but those people who are working on the ground today so for instance, we had the head of the COC for New Mexico uh, present, providing his presentations and his perspectives on the homeless, uh, pro, uh, the need for homeless folks in, in the area, which has, because of COVID, has uh, grown exponentially. Um, so, from my perspective and from what I believe HUD was looking for, I think a description of the area demographics and trends and populations, historical context is incredibly important, right? Uh, we're not building a building to warehouse people. We're hopefully we're building something not only that we can be proud of from a, a physical appearance, but we're actually creating a place for people to begin and enrich their lives, right? And and the ways and by which we do this in order to become more fulfilled human beings is uh, housing is a part of that context. And so I think it's really important to understand those issues before you even begin some of the architectural uh, elements in terms of making sure that you can incorporate those kind of thoughts. Uh, we had picked this particular site for, for very specific reasons. One is one next to other properties. In addition, we're working with a lot of local developers and the city of Santa Fe. This, this particular project is within the city itself uh, in order to uh, bring this whole area up as a far more densely populated pedestrian area. And the students were very, um, really took that cue well and were able to provide examples of densities of the housings that really isn't seen very much within the city currently. So we were actually happy to see that kind of thing. So uh, in terms of just how the, the, it, it positively impacted the, the uh, county's housing authority, I think I can speak to that in many different ways. 
um, just just want to kind of go here to the, the again concentrating on some of the historical and cultural attributes that are important to the, the, the city of Santa Fe itself, to the county of Santa Fe itself, and, 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 and some of the history, both in, from an architectural uh, elements, but also just from a, a way of thinking elements, um, the combination of different cultures here that have been working side by side for hundreds of years, and, and making sure that we envelop that, and we make this constant, um, make a physical rendition of our willingness and desire to continue to live together and live well together. Um, some of the examples that we showed here in terms of our um, original submission was the, the palace of the governors. It may not look like a palace to most folks, but um, that was quite a palace uh, <laughs> Back in the day. Uh, during the context of this time, as it might be. <laughs> um, uh, of course, the the Native Americans were in this area far before the Spanish where the Spanish came. This is the second, it's the oldest capital city in the United States and the second oldest city besides um, Florida. And I think I saw Miami there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, and then uh, of course, um, the, the, the Pueblo culture, we have five different uh, Pueblos in the immediate area surrounding the city have been a constant source of influence and exchange. Um, uh, to the area. And I would just add to that, if we go back for a minute, that one of the things that was really fabulous to see from the student presentations was that they took this historical and, and the cultural attributes and they really incorporated those into their designs, which was really nice. It was really thoughtful. And we see it in each one of the four that we received, you know, in different areas. So um, that was just just really terrific to to view. So the next slide, please. So lessons learned. So first of all, I, one of the impressions that we got, it was just really nice to work with young people, right? And new ways of thinking of things and new ideas. And so you know, uh, for those of us who've been in development for a long time, you become somewhat jaded and, and this is, well, we can't do this, we have to do this. and our, our, the federal guidelines for this are, are important on this and the sources of money only allow us to do this. So it was nice to just to be able to kind of break out of that. Um, also, I think we saw tremendous uh, creativity as, as Lee had mentioned in terms of the design aspect itself. Each one of them was completely different than the other. And each one of them actually reflected very closely the kind of things we were looking for, but in, in completely different ways, right? So they they came to solutions for problems that we saw and that we needed to be have filled and they came at them in completely different ways. So I, so it was important to be able to see those kind of things. Um, uh, of course, I think both with the Department of Housing and Urban Development and, and, and the County of Santa Fe itself, we have a very long and hard tradition of not only respecting the, the land, um, but really continuously thinking about the idea of sustainability. Um, the, uh, the inhabitants here have been here for a very long time when you have to live with a, an arid climate and and you you really can't live here without respecting the land and the water uh, otherwise you ran it up with those resources fairly quickly um, under the planning side uh, it, it was interesting we saw some models that I, I had not seen before a model actually that I had not seen before uh, and, and of course we had some standard models that were being presented but we certainly like the idea of how, how folks kind of try to do their research with them and try to combine different sources of funds and, and financing structures. And then it, finally for us, uh, or not finally, because Lee's got a, a lot of um, input here, is that it generated a lot of new ideas. I, and I think it's very important if you already have an architect on, on board, please make sure that they're part of the process so they can hear their interaction and, and really think about um, providing some level of guidance or, or to both to us and the architect itself so that we can bring some of these new ideas to the development itself. Lee and I don't, I'm sure you had something to add, I'm sorry. Well, I wanted to piggyback just on a few things that I thought were really, really interesting that crossed over in some cases to, to, the, to the presentations. And so the concept of rentals and home ownership and the ability and this tied to financing as well where 
you would build both on the same site and then you would take out you know obviously the cash from the home ownership piece and use that to subsidize the rentals so we we it was something that we think about but we don't you know typically think about it here and that was that was nice to see and it was very creative they introduced live work which i think happens kind of organically in santa fe but frankly the first project that's actually i think a very deliberate live work here is happening right now and it's a lie tech project that just got funded silo yards for artists um so i've seen it in other places but i've not seen it here so this is this was very deliberate and and one of the students uh one of the teams had introduced that live work concept which is really i think in high demand here given the given the number of artists and the number of um you know creative people in the community the emphasis on fostering community whether it was open plazas meeting spaces community gardens greenways um that was just lovely to see there was a, a real celebration i thought of again the the sense of place and the history here with art and nature that was blended into the plans and then of course the focus on sustainability and really building for the long term whether it was the building envelope or whether it was resource conservation there were some great plans on stormwater management bioretention um, all of those things were just really terrific. I mean, we've already jumped on um, one of the pieces was, uh, you know, the connectivity from the site out to a little greenway trail that then tied into a central bus system here. And we've already started pursuing that. So those were very thoughtful, interesting uh, comments. And I, I think the one that was sort of the most interesting to us was one of the proposals proposed very inter, inter generational housing and it's and it was very creative in that we don't necessarily think about it here when you talk about the historic place um, it hasn't been really built for intergenerational housing in the past so it's something that was food for thought for us for you know a future project so there's both the what we can incorporate and what we really like into the 6.6 .6 acres that we're looking at now, but then what we can take and perhaps build into one of the other projects that we would do in the future. And that was really fun and interesting as well. So yeah, it was, it was a delight, as Joseph said, all the creativity and the energy and, um, and just, um, you know, the sky was kind of the limit for folks and that was really great. And that's my two cents. <laughs> it was at least five cents. Or five cents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Thank you. We certainly appreciate your input. Um, all right. It, now go ahead and if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A box there at the bottom in your control panel. Um, Lauren, are you ready to go ahead and start uh, yes. giving some questions? Okay, great. So we have two that have already been answered, but um, just so everybody can hear them. The first one was, can we submit more than one project for consideration? And uh, Regina answered it and she said, unfortunately, no. Um, and then the next question we had was, what are some examples of themes of past challenges that students addressed? And Regina said, great question. The first year, 2014, we partnered with Camden, New Jersey to expand units for disabled veterans. In Lafayette, um, Louisiana, the theme was expanding senior housing. And then she sent um, a link to learn more. Um, the next question is, are PHAs required to use the design? And that has not been answered yet. No, they're not required to use the design. But you'll get all four designs, and as Joe said, you can pick and choose. Um, and we're actually going to go back to all the PHAs that we have, um, who have partnered with us for the past eight years, and ask them whether or not they use the designs and how they used them. It could be that they use maybe the financing model, maybe they use part of uh, Project A, part of Project B. Um, but it is a good exercise to get new and creative ideas from some really smart kids out there. Uh -huh. I, I, I would add to that that the students work incredibly hard. They take this, they take the competition incredibly seriously, very seriously, intensely seriously. 
Um, and they work, they work very hard on these, on these projects. Um, so we, you know, the goal is this is a real world um, challenge. So we want to find innovative solutions that are affordable or cost effective. Um, and we and we really do want to learn whether or not some of these great ideas get incorporated into the projects themselves. And we are going to go back and do some of the work on that and find out. Uh, so we understand that Camden, New Jersey, for example, um, did have a ribbon cutting ceremony a few years ago. We could not make the ceremony, uh, but um, they did incorporate a lot of the student ideas uh, of that competition. And that's what we like to see, uh, because it, these are real solutions to real housing challenges. Uh, so. I did want to add that there's a true sense of competition between the students too. I mean, not only was their uh, abilities very high, but the amount of research they did, I was really impressed with, right? I mean, so some of it was definitely to the point where it was a professional project in terms of uh, you, you know, receiving your master's degree in architecture or planning. And so it was really to that level of quality. And so I was really impressed um, um, with the whole, <laughs> and, and there is a heightened sense of competition. I mean, the students really want to win and they'll do what it takes to make that happen. Definitely. Okay, awesome. Um, the next question is, does the project have to already be initiated or can this competition be the springboard for speculation? How defined do the parameters need to be? That's a good question. So the um, question, we can do you repeat it? Uh, does the project already have to be initiated or can this competition be the springboard for speculation? How defined do the parameters need to be? Regina, do you want to answer? Already initiated. Uh, does that mean already completed? Or is it so the, the project can be either a new construction or an existing development that requires, you know, capital improvements or uh, renovated uh, renovations. To the speculation part, though, you have to have something concrete. So we wouldn't, we don't want um, PHAs to make up scenarios for the future. You know, it's something that the PHA wants to do. They want to get ideas and they may implement them. So um, if that's what you mean by speculation, we we're not necessarily interested in those kinds of projects. Okay, we have another question that says, it seems like it is two competitions, one for the PHA and then one for the students. How, are, how many PHAs are chosen? Do the students all come from the same school? All right, so uh, we choose one PHA to partner with us every year. Uh, and the law dictates to us, or at least our F Office of Ethics um, says that we have to uh, select the housing authority that meets all of the requirements. And I, I, I mentioned uh, them in my presentation, but uh, we do have them posted at uh, the, the main webpage. Um, but we are required to select the, the, the housing authority that meets those, you know, meets those specific uh, criteria. Um, and I forget the last part of the question, I'm sorry. Um, how are the PHAs chosen and then do students all come from the same school? Yeah, so uh, they're chosen based on uh, um, the, the, the meeting of those requirements uh, that we set forth. And students, it's interesting, um, so in the past, we have had universities partnering together. So students from one university, let's say uh, one year we had New York University and Columbia University that formed a team of students. And again, the team consists of three to five graduate students representing uh, various discipl uh, disciplines. Uh, so what planning, engineering, policy, uh, what have you. Uh, with the faculty advisor. Uh, what we have not had in the past are, um, uh, you know, is a competition that where there's a, a university or college that submitted more than one 
application and both applications made it or advanced to the, to the final review. Uh, I should say that the review process is blind. Uh, so we don't know uh, who, what the, the universities are. We don't know the names of, of the universities. We don't know the, name of the names of the students. And so that hopefully interjects some, some integrity into the process and some fairness into the process. But as far as selecting PHAs, you know, we are required to adhere to sh those strict requirements. And so um, that's how we are selecting uh, our PHA. Okay, we have another good question uh, that how close do you need to be to a major airport and how much driving time is allowed? Okay, so the standard is 40 miles from the airport to the site. Unfortunately, we've had situations in the past where the airport was substantially far, uh, you know, significantly far from the airport. Uh, but we really emphasize that, that the airport should be within driving, you know, reasonable driving distance. 40 miles is the, is the metric though. And when will we find out if we have been selected? Deal. <laughs> have you set a deadline for that? Sure. We have not, we haven't set a deadline that uh, well, they'll start coming in on the 8th and I would assume that next week in October we may be able to announce. Um, I don't believe we have a, a set date because we'll have to go through everything. But um, I would expect to see something either the following week uh, or I'd say at latest the beginning of, I'm sorry, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but the beginning of the next week. It won't be long. Awesome. And how many PHAs typically apply that we would be competing against? We do well. Um, we receive, wow, we receive anywhere from 100 to a little over maybe 150, between 100 and 150 um, PHAs who express an interest um, to us. Again, this year we're requiring when you expressed, when you send an email expressing interest to have those other materials that I talked about earlier. Um, so that, that also will reduce the time that we will need to review, you know, to, to make a decision because then we don't have to keep going back and forth with the housing authority to get more information about the project. So if we get all that information at once, when you send an email to us um, expressing your desire to partner with us, um, that will reduce the time of, of, of for our review uh, a great deal. So we can move the process along a bit quicker than we ordinarily would, but roughly between 100 and 150 housing authorities apply every year. Okay, we have another really good question that says, if we have a few projects all in different stages of development, what would be the best project to bring forward? What is the best stage that is the most beneficial to students and to the PHAs? Uh, I think you used the one that's uh, usually from the PHA to make. Uh, we, we, we like to allow them to have some flexibility uh, most of the projects that we've had in the past, uh, I guess it was roughly the same. Half the projects were new construction, half the projects were existing construction. Uh, maybe one or two of the developments where there was an existing uh, project was in some stage of the, of the development process. Um, but that is a decision that the housing authority makes. There's no advantage either way, by the way. It, it doesn't matter if it's a new or existing construction or what phase it's in. Um, you don't get extra points for, for that. So don't worry about that. Okay, that's all our questions right now. But, um, oh, somebody just said something. Uh, would you please help clarify the timeline? Is it that firstly, PHA is chosen, then secondly, students can begin their work on the projects within the chosen PHA's area? 
No? Yes, that is the timeline. Um, we currently we're in a registration period for the students. So students are uh, registering their teams, forming their teams right now. And then uh, we will uh, be kind of behind the scenes working with the PHA to get all of your information during the registration time. And um, then we will close registration. And typically within a day or two, then we release the information about the PHA and the site so they can get started. I hope that answers your question. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions, but if anybody else has anything, um, we still have some time. Uh, in response to the schedule, uh, you can go right now to IAH at HUDUser.gov. That's IAH at HUDUser.gov. We have the schedule for the competition on the front page. So as soon as you go to that to the front page, you if you scroll down to sort of three fourths away of the from the bottom, you will see the schedule for this year's competition posted there. So if you're interested in sort of learning how the you know the the sequence of events, um, information, all information about the comp competition will be posted on the website, including this webinar and also the webinar that we held for um, interested graduate students and faculty a couple of weeks ago. That webinar is posted, is that right, Jill? That, that webinar is available um, and posted on the site. This one will be available and posted on the site. Um, we're also gonna be doing a series of interviews with um, former students um, and faculty who were involved in the competition. We're going to be interviewing also some exec, uh, executive directors, including Joe um, from Santa Fe, on their experiences. And we will post those, all of that, all of those events on the main webpage. Let's see. I don't see any more. Oh, sorry. Just FYI, uh, here at the end of the webinar, we're going to put up a slide and it will have a little QR code. And if you open your phone's camera app and just hold it over the QR code, it'll take you right to the site to the where you can find all of this information. I also put the URL on the chat. So you can click on the URL directly on the chat and it will take you to the HUD's main site. Not HUD's main site, I'm sorry, the competition's main site, and then the you can look at the schedule there as well. We've then, also been working closely with the Office of Public Affairs. Um, they've been very gracious to us um, and created a, a Twitter account and also Facebook and I believe an Instagram account for the student competition. Um, we will post the, the handles for those social media vehicles, if you will, um, on the site so that you can follow and keep up with announcements or any information um, in real time. Uh, for the students, we have created a network where they could work together. If, if there's a student who's looking for a team to join or if looking for a team to create, um, they could use that, that, uh, that vehicle to, to, um, to put together their teams for the competition. Um, we don't have something similar for housing authorities, but um, we are working on, uh, you know, various, we have some ideas for uh, ensuring that PHAs can maybe network and talk about the, the competition and ask questions and share research reports, ideas. Um, we're developing some ideas around how we want to, to, uh, to, to develop a tool for that. So stay tuned. Um, and again, the main page, IAH at user.gov. Regina, that's the actually the um web the I'm sorry, the email address. So if you want to use that to email us, we'll be happy to answer questions. Um if you look over in the chat box, uh Jigurdi has put the the link, and I think you can just click on it maybe from here to go to yeah. the site. Mm -hmm. It's a little, it's a little more, I don't know, they must have changed the way they're giving out web addresses this year. Yeah, it's, it's a little different than it was previously. Yeah. Um, there are two uh, more questions, right? Yeah, it looks like we have two people asking about when the deadline for PHAs to submit is. I don't think it, Regina mentioned it, but we, 
I would send out an email the day, the minute it opens, because we go from the first, you know, we go, we go in order of when it was received and whoever is the first one in order that meets all our criteria usually is the one that we pick. So, um, to make sure so you send us information, you send us everything we require and um, noon at, on the 8th is one of those. And it will close us. I mean, I think it closes pretty quickly. We get emails right away on that day. Did you want to add something, Regina? Oh, I, I was going to just make sure that we have that information on, posted on the website. Um, so if there's a housing authority that wanted to join us today but couldn't, uh, you know, we will have that information. Please feel free to share with your networks. Um, share with Ada and Clafa and all your, all your friends um, uh, about the competition. If you have connections to area colleges and universities, spread the word. Um, feel free to ask us questions or send us questions about the competition. And again, we will have updated information. We'll make sure that we update the page consistently um, and, and, and frequently. Let's see. Um, somebody wanted some clarification on that it's not a competition. It's just the first one to complete the requirements. It is a competition for the students and for the PHA to partner with us. Um, not necessarily a competition, I guess. It's just, yes, the first, it just we're trying to be fair to all the PHAs. So the first one that has all the information that that provides us with all the information we require, we just we just select that so we don't have any additional criteria that we put into it. Um, so we're being fair in that way. We also have another question that says, when will you make the determination if the site visit is virtual or in person? That's a good question. Okay. My mistake, because I forgot to, uh, to make that announcement during my presentation, but uh, we do have a contingency plan if there's no site visit and if we cannot ha hold the final presentations and award ceremony at, at HUD headquarters in April. Um, we do have a contingency plan in place. This past year, Santa Fe was so gracious to us and we did everything virtually. Um, and we, we, we thought the competition went well, just as, just as good as we were, as it would have gone if we were in, in person. And in fact, I think the, the past competition was one of the best. Um, so we will go vir virtual if we cannot do a, sort of an in-person per site visit or have the final presentations. Hopefully we will. Um, the students get a lot out of the site visits. They learn so much and it's the, the exchange with you know, with the, the project stakeholders and, and, and with the housing authority officials and government officials, it's just, it's more enriching if we, if we do it in person. So hopefully um, we'll get through this current crisis and we'll be able to, um, to have the site visit as planned in person. I, I think Regina, they were asking when and really right now, as government employees, we're not able to travel. So, um, so when you know restrictions are lifted for even us to travel, there were a lot of students that weren't given permission to travel to the very last minute. So we'll keep a close eye on all of those contingency plans and make the decision as quickly and as possible, so that we're safe. We keep your staff safe, and we keep the students safe as well. And let me just add that the site visit again is typically around mid March. And then the final awards, uh, presentations and award ceremony is held at HUD headquarters, typically a month later, mid-April. And for the site visit, um, we will work with you on that. We won't, you won't be, especially if we do a virtual one, you won't be kind of left off on your own. And we will definitely work kind of hand in hand with you to figure out the best way that we can still provide an enriching, um, engaging experience for all of the students in a more virtual format. Um, whether that's doing some a wet morning and afternoon webinar with some panelists and then maybe like a um, 
virtual kind of tour or something like that, we'll work through that with you if that's the case. And so you, we're not just going to, you know, put that off on you. We'll, we'll definitely, um, we'll, we'll work those logistics out with you if, if that happens. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions right now. Looks like we have about four minutes left in the webinar. So if there's any last questions, we would be happy to answer. Don't see any right now. Um, does anybody have any final thoughts or any of our panelists have final thoughts that they would like to share? Yes, I, I would like to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. You know, again, uh, this is the end of the fiscal year, so you know we understand that people are incredibly busy, um, and just really appreciate you joining us today and 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 hanging in there and learning more about the student competition. And I and I do hope that you look into joining us this year. And again, if you have any questions at all that come up after this is over, please feel free to. Uh, email us at iah at hudmuser.gov. We'll get back with you. Um, and then we will be posting this webinar, the replay online um, on our website. So go ahead and check that out at your convenience and feel free to share it with people if, if you know anybody that would like to see it. So I think since we don't have, oh, is there another question? We have two here. Oh, I'm yes. sorry, yeah, great. <laughs> so somebody asked, does the proposal, uh, should be existed or we can submit our proposal for what we think it should happen in the future and housing in the US. The, the first part of the, uh, you, you, can you just read the first part of that question again, Lauren? Uh, yes, it says, does the proposal should be existed or we can submit our proposal for what we think it should happen in the future and housing in the US? I think that's asking whether it should be an existing issue with your housing authority. And so the answer is yes. It's something that you really want to, you have resources, you want, it's, it's in your plan to conduct anyhow or complete. So um, it should be existing, um, not something that's out in the future speculation. So. Um, and then uh, somebody asked, are there requirements for applying on the website? Yes. yes. Yeah. Actually, the last slide that I'm going to put up here in just one second, that's the one with the QR code, and that takes you to the page that's specific for PHAs, and it will have all the requirements listed there for you. It's kind of a checklist for you. Okay. Joe and Lee, any, any uh, remaining thoughts or comments? No. Yeah, I just want to encourage all the housing authorities to apply. I think it's a fantastic experience. Um, uh, and I think just going through the process alone kind of helps facilitate um, more focused thoughts. Even if you're not picked, um, you could really put together something nice for able to, to promote the housing authority itself. So, and we took this opportunity at the Santa Fe County Housing Authority to kind of announce that um, this was our intention to the, to the community and then initially be able to get those folks who will be approving our projects in terms of the city councilors um, and the commissioners uh, a, a step into the process itself without having, without having to be official about it. And so it was a good introduction to our financiers, it was a good introduction um, to the folks that will be eventually approving the projects and, and it, it was a, a good way to be able to introduce that we really want to do a fantastic job for the community. Uh, somebody asked how many PHAs are currently on the webinar? I thought there were. At uh, 25 attendees, uh, I think it's a variation here from what I can, uh, from what I can tell, but uh, Jill, do you have a count of uh, housing authorities? I didn't count the actual housing authorities, but I know we had roughly 50 different people from housing authorities, although there were some that had like two, two from the same one. So if I had to make a guess, I'd say maybe 
40-ish on here. And I know some people left a little early, so I yeah. remember I see the number was a bit higher. But I, think I know some people like they'll yeah. sign up and um, just to get the replay link. Mm -hmm. All right, well, um, it looks like we are at the top of the hour. I'm gonna show this, uh, this last slide so everybody will have our information. One moment. All right, so here you have all of the, our contact information and this QR code here is specific to the PHA site that you can also uh, get to the homepage there too. So you can kind of see the full picture of the competition. And uh, then here at the bottom is just a reminder that the registration does open at noon on October 8th. So we definitely appreciate everyone for joining us. Uh, it's been a great webinar. We're so happy to have Joe and Lee join us. They've, they've really been wonderful partners to work with. So uh, thank you everyone and enjoy the rest of your day. You too.